For my part in this allegory, I'm not going to make the same mistakes my father made. Howard vanished from my mother's life before I was even in it, so when he sent me a letter a few days after Mum's funeral, it was the first I'd ever heard from him. But he was dead. Writing from beyond the grave must be a genetic habit in my bloodline. His letter contained a key, instructions, pleas for forgiveness. I figured the dead don't have much use for absolution, so I turned to his prophetic passing, which he inexplicably expected to come any day. Clearly averse to explanations, my father preferred to leave directions to a bank on Mayfair I'd never even heard of. In that bank was a safety deposit box in his name, and myself as executor. Of course, I went as he knew I would. I discovered that despite the evidence, he'd been legally declared dead almost 30 years ago, and so the old book and collection of notes I found had, in the eyes of the law, been mine all this time. My father's instructions were to burn the documents, raise no further questions. But that was his error. No man's immune to the shameful trappings of curiosity, and my humanity got the better of me. The university I taught at was world-renowned for two things, physics and linguistics. I represented the first, and the man who stood for the second was stumped by my recent acquisition. The book was indecipherable. The notes, however, showed a location somewhere in uninhabited northern Greenland. It took me almost a year to book the last flight I'd ever taken. As I watched civilization disappear along with Heathrow, I realised my father had disappeared three decades ago, almost to the day, and I considered in turn what it was that I was leaving behind. We landed on a strip of ice a few feet wide, and within minutes I was pulling away on a chartered boat, beginning the 12-hour journey that would lead me into my past. Hello and welcome to a new Let's Play video. Well, new for you, not for me. I tried starting this Let's Play video yesterday. Apparently my microphone settings had been in the shit and my voice could, my beautiful voice could not be heard at all. So, I'm gonna start over. I managed to play about a half an hour from the start, so I know what I'm doing in the beginning. It's a boring love letter, we're not going to read that one. I'm certain this map's a good decade or so out of date, but landmarks don't change much in Greenland, so I've got a pretty decent idea of where I'm heading. wind is going to blow quite fierce, so my voice is probably going to drown.
looks like we're not getting up anytime soon. What's this? Boxes of ammunition. And why the hell had they so much ammunition? Actually, I think I know. I think just realized I found a clue to the source of the ammunition a while back. Another flare. Hello. Seriously love the lighting in this game. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Okay. There's not going to be much to comment in the first about 20 minutes of the game now that I know what I'm doing. So don't wonder. I'll probably be screaming my lungs out of terror soon enough. time. This way? Yes. This way. Uh, that was making it rumble like that. It's like an earthquake or something. Down we go. Whatever I was descending into, it was a hundred feet below ground, protected by two solid metal hatches, located in a remote arctic wilderness and buried beneath the snow. I didn't know what to expect, but it made me feel something I hadn't felt since I was a child. I'd never given it much thought before, but I realized that our entire society is a, is a network of safety nets, emergency services at the end of the phone line, health and safety in the workplace, friends, family, lovers, all there, if something goes wrong, part of a carefully designed structure to prevent all but the most mundane of emotions. Once again, I felt like I did when I was in school. Surrounded by a closing ring of older kids, knowing anyone that might help me, friends, parents, teachers, were too scared or too far away. Yes, that makes it pretty damn clear that we are alone. Oh shit. I thought I heard. I'm not entirely sure if the first enemy of the game is already patrolling around here. Or if it appears later on. Right. Map. We are here. We're going to go to the office, have a look around there, and then we're going to see what we find. I know this is the region the first enemy of the game shows up. I really don't like to make acquaintances with him. I know what's going to happen in a while, so I'll move the rocks out of the way and stuff out of the way so I can hide behind this crate. Run! hate the no noise that door makes. It's way too loud. So much history in this place, tied up in words and left to decompose. Typewriter dates back even further than the war, made in Germany, 1923. The Empire Typewriters. Das Reich!
Okay, it's what? Beef jerky! An age old filing cabinet. Ah, it's locked. I need a key. More beef jerky. I think the beef jerky has something to do with distracting or placating the dogs. There are dog monsters in this game. I've seen one. It's the first enemy of the game. I really don't want to make close acquaintances with them. It's creepy as fuck. Can't see into that one. Empty. I really, really love this engine. Some Baxtrin. 15th of August, I'm sorry, 1945. Command Bunker Emergency Airstrip Zulu, weekly report. Another unremarkable week in Greenland. Regular supply shipment received. Standard emergency drills carried out. Routine runway maintenance completed. I have ordered maintenance to be carried out twice weekly from here on in. Due to increased snowfall. One wounded. The one wounded figure is no cause of concern back in London. The Germans haven't extended their front line by 4,000 miles. Two of my men were caught manufacturing cherry bombs in our workshop slash armory and succeeded in blowing off a couple of fingers. I take partial responsibility for this in that I allowed them access to the demolitions manual to keep in the storeroom and I'm sure that where that's where they learned the ingredients. As a precautionary measure, I have now locked up that manual in the chest in my office and will keep the key on my person at all times. Needless to stay, but say both men have been disciplined, and the injured man has been sent home for medical care. Blech. I cannot help but think that a more suitable punishment would have been for him to stay out here, but the matter is out of my hands. Uh, the base is so disconnected, sometimes I feel as if the war could end, and we might not even hear about it out here. Supplies requisition order, it's dynamite for excavation purposes, seven bayonets, not necessary in my, in my opinion, but procedure states that we should have a full complement. One industrial ice pick for removing the damn ice that forms on the external hatch. One pair of reading glasses, category 7C. In order for myself, my glasses are in a rather poor state of repair and could do with replacing. Reconditioning of the mine continues to progress. The structure is being fortified from potential bomb damage, and excavation of previously caved in areas is going ahead. One point of curiosity is some kind of archaeological find, an artifact buried in the earth, and discovered by one of the work teams. Later this evening, after martial duty, I shall take a closer look at the artifact. It appears to be man-made, and may have working parts inside. I shall remove what looks like the front cover, and see if I can discover the source of the light which constantly emanates from it. Chief NCO. Major. Some batteries. Some more shit. Nothing. Nothing. Key. Copenhagen Post, Monday 17th of August 1930. Psychotropic deposits at the bottom of the Death Mine. I love the name of this place, it's, it really makes me feel at home. Re researchers at the University of Copenhagen have suggested that mind altering chemicals naturally sewn into the rock may be the cause of high suicide rates at a Greenland mine. The university, which has been recently which has recently been conducting studies into isolated communities, first became interested in the workers of the Northwestern Lead Mine last year. They discovered that the that even taking into account Greenland's naturally higher suicide rate, local figures for the last hundred years were abnormally high, at 46 deaths per 100,000 populace, compared to the national average of 29. On further investigation, expert diagnosed in many of the miners symptoms in common with the earlier stages of paranoid schizophrenia, this has prompted researchers to hypothesize that natural deposits of lysergic acid, a pH4 formula recently discovered to have hallucinogenic properties, may be present in the rocks. Few locals were conductive to the interview, but those who, were, who agreed to speak had their own explanation. Inuit spirits, known as the Turngate, is what I believe it says, live in the mountains. 
The university is awaiting the results and chemical testing studies continue. And this artifact, as explained by the game's manual, is a save station of sorts.